Have there been any big surprises um, out in Napa um, uh, this year for y'all? Um, I don't know if I have any super huge takeaways from winemaking itself. Um, it's all been pretty awesome and I've learned a lot. However, coming here, there's I didn't expect there to be such a huge community of people that I could reach out to and talk to and ask questions. Um, to and like Aman especially it's super helpful we had a long conversation one night I mean day three here I was at an event at Ashes and Diamonds with one of my roommates and just like a whole bunch of industry people and it was insane so like the Very community cool really is awesome yeah awesome uh Iman. um I think one of the there's two things one is how the Napa Valley, um, you know, we have such an iconic, we have such a rich history in the Napa Valley, whether it's about, whether it's soil, topography, um, wine, but also in style. And I think that the greatest uh, takeaway or what's encouraged me to continue to pursue production is that there really is more space for more producers. There's, I mean, I've made a lot of friends and, um, of like of people that don't make a ton of cases of wine and you know I think that it's really it's been really encouraging in that regard um Steve always says like I mean Steve and Joe started far they farm vineyards that they don't even own that they lease and it's people's backyards and people that like have second homes and so I think that what blew my mind was the opportunity that's here um to actually make wine and um, from a winemaking perspective, I've been really into this co-ferments, um, not necessarily with different fruits, which although we've played with that here, and that's like definitely burgeoning right now. Yeah. Yeah. But in at Matthiasen, you know, one of our flagship wines is the Cabernet Sauvignon. And I, in my mind, had this idea of what co-fermenting was. And then I realized that it was very simply, you know, you put fruit in a tank and then you put <laughs> another fruit in the tank and you just kind of make a, like a layered cake. But the cool trick here is that I, um, and I asked at length, but basically when we do co-ferment, um, Steve's philosophy is to keep the best of the fruit or the highest quality of the fruit at the bottom of the tank. Because when we're doing pump overs, we want the remain like the composite to be immersed in the juice of the fruit and or of the fruit with the highest quality. And I thought that that was really cool. And it kind of, again, especially from like being a sommelier or especially from theory, theory and, you know, when you see things in per like in person, it's like, it's so different. Like, and then you realize it's really not that complicated, but sometimes <laughs> we make it complicated. So I think that's been the that's, coolest that's thing. That's incredible. Yeah. And that is, that is very cool. I love co-ferments. Yeah, you're right. It's something that a lot of people are experimenting with, even fruit and, 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 and wine grapes. Um, pretty, pretty amazing to see those. Um, Gabriella. Um, I mean, to go off of co-ferments, I mean, absolutely. I, I, you know, that's such a rich part of California heritage, California winemaking history. Coferments is, that was the pre-prohibition winemaking tradition. So it's beautiful to honor that. There is a rich winemaking tradition here in the Napa Valley that, that really goes back. And so it's beautiful to see something that is traditional be celebrated again. And I completely agree with Iman that there's room for everything here in the Napa Valley. There, there truly, truly is. Um, there's... This is such a complex growing region and it offers a lot.